Well, I know how much our next guest is looking forward to baseball getting back underway because, man, what a special season he had a year ago out in San Francisco. He is, of course, the pride of St. Paul's and the University of Maryland. It is a pleasure to welcome back into the program Late Night Lamont, the man himself. Lamont Wade is with us on GCR. Lamont, it's Glenn back in Baltimore. It's great to chat with you, man. Thank you for taking the time for us. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Dude, it's so good to catch up with you. Can you, like, put into words this magical thing that you got to experience a year ago? And, like, was there a moment for you like, holy crap, is this real? <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, it was definitely, um, definitely a special season, you know. Um, you know, it was definitely quite the ride, you know, starting off in AAA and then eventually getting called up and, you know, um, doing everything I could to have try and have an impact and contribute to the team, like, um, uh, the best team in baseball at the time, you know, it was it was really fun, and uh, I look forward to definitely getting back, like you said. But uh, no, it was definitely a great time, and definitely uh, a lot of hard work went into it. But I feel like we had a great group of guys, and it made it that much easier and, and, and more enjoyable. I want to talk more about that hard work because I I, I got a sense for where it might come from. But I, I, let me start with the did Did you know in your heart that this thing, this pinch hitting thing, this this clutch moment, did you always know that you were the guy that had the clutch gene that they talk about or did, did that even take you a little bit by surprise did you not know maybe that that was something that you were so good at uh honestly you know throughout the season i didn't i paid no mind to it and had no paid no attention to it uh, <laughs> whatsoever you know just so locked into the moment um but now that you now that you look back on it you know just very appreciative of cap you know having trust in me in those situations and um allowing me the opportunity um to get those um those hits and those opportunities and also got to thank my teammates for putting me in those type of situations so um definitely no definitely didn't know um <laughs> wasn't expecting anything like that but um for it to happen it definitely um definitely i mean no, it was definitely a great time too when you were growing up here in baltimore did you play any other sports lamont yes i played basketball okay so when you were playing basketball were you the guy that liked to have the ball in your hands at the end of the game like did you want to be the guy taking the last shot um, basketball, honestly, I was pretty good at, on defense. Um, okay. I was, I was score, I was score a decent amount, but, um, you know, my thing was, I was getting most of my points off of steals and, and defense and stuff like that and rebounds, you know? So, um, I never really had no plays at the end of the game okay. drawn up for me, but, um, but, you know, I, w- I definitely wouldn't have been opposed to taking the shot well, sure. if, I, if I had it. I'm yeah. thinking in hindsight, now that we know what we know about you, you might have been really good in those situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I, basketball was definitely my first sport. I mean, uh, growing up, I definitely loved basketball. Um, just eventually, you know, baseball really took over for me and uh, went that direction. But I, I always loved the game of basketball. We're chatting with Lamont Wade here on GCR. So, Lamont, I was chatting with your former uh, hitting coach at Maryland, Matt Swope, I, I, and, and, you know, he was giving me some really good insight. And we, I think we know some of the struggles that you had gone through when you had gotten up in Minnesota and, you know, those first couple opportunities. How much do you think the work that you had put in with Matt and coming back home really helped correlate to that success that you had last season in San Francisco? Absolutely. I mean, um, Ever since I went to the University of Maryland, you know, me and Matt had a, you know, a great relationship, you know, always respected, um, respected him and uh, his opinion, you know, as a former player and a former Terp, you know, definitely. So, you know, never lost contact with him as I went to pro ball. We were always, we were always talk and, you know, check in. And then, uh, you know, I started coming back to work out at the University of Maryland, hitting with him um, after the, after the season, after the 2020 season um, with the twins, um, you know, just really sat down had a heart to heart with him, let him know that, you know, something's got to change. Um, you know, trying to, I just, you know, need to be more efficient, need to, you know, more consistency and try and do anything. I would open and do anything to, you know, try and make it work to, you know, become a better hitter. And, um, you know, we took that whole off season and we kind of really completely overhauled the swing and everything and the, and the thought and the mind process behind everything. And um was, was fortunate and uh, very grateful for the season that I had last year and I thought um, you know that's definitely a testament to, to Matt and all the work that we put in and um, really you know the way that he's that's who he is you know just a great teacher and a great and a, a great hitting coach who, who definitely knows what he's talking about and you know, I put my complete trust in him and um, continue to work out with him every off season since so that's really cool it's definitely been great can, can, yeah. could I ask you like again assume I'm like a five-year-old like I'm that dumb I'm hot. um when you talk about changing your swing, what does that actually functionally mean? Like, what 
are you standing in a different way? Is your timing um, different? What what does it functionally mean? Yeah, so definitely. So it started with the stance. Um, we changed up the stance. I was before I was, you know, kind of crouched down, opened up stance. We kind of we definitely just the first thing we did was stand, kind of stand straight up um, and put the bat in a different positioning, um, kind of more close to in front of me instead of like cocked behind my back um, usual. Um, so and then from there it was really. The biggest thing I would say is, you know, the, the thought of where I was attacking the baseball. Hmm. Um, I was so used to seeing it deep, um, and, you know, kind of, you know, seeing it, seeing the ball deep, and we kind of got he got me completely out of that. Attacked the ball out in front, um, out front of the plate, and um, that was really the biggest key. And um, I really say that's how I think I was able to uh, square square baseballs up more consistently and uh, uh, kind of hit from a little bit more power than before, um, not letting the balls get on me and really kind of attacking the ball out in front and allowing myself to have a better chance to drive the baseball. What's it been like for you? I, I know you've been back these last couple of weeks and, and spending time as, you know, as they've been getting ready for their season. You kind of don't know what's right. going on with your own season. Um, right. What's it been like for you working now with these guys? Obviously, you're still trying to you know perfect your craft and, and get ready for right. your own thing. But being around these younger guys, what's that experience been like for you and trying to help them a little bit? Oh, it's been great. Um, the guys have been very welcoming. You know, um, uh, I feel like they has got a good team. I mean, I, I watched them play three games this weekend, which was great. And they're all a great start. I'm looking forward to going out and watch them play against UNBC tomorrow. Um, you know, but the guys have been great. They've been working really hard. They're listening to their coaches. Um, I mean, they have great coaches, starting with uh, Coach Vaughn. You yep. know, obviously Coach Swope. You know, uh, and. Uh, my man Anthony Papio, who was my roommate actually when I was at the University of Maryland, they're all doing great, uh, unbelievable job. That's cool. And I'm proud of everything that they're doing. They got a very good team, and they're very receptive when I talk to them. And they also they also bring up good questions. And they're always oh man. I try and give them the I try and answer the best I can, but um, but no, the guys have been great, and I'm looking forward to um, what they do this season. That's awesome. And obviously, you know, the, the, the groundwork has been laid for this program and how things have changed so significantly, right? Like, it's it's, it's pretty clear. There's You mentioned what they did down at Baylor this weekend, which is just almost unreal, right? Walking down right. there and sweeping them. That's really incredible. Lamont, you know, right. I, I noticed that you put, um, you know, Matt's kind of business bio in your Twitter bio, right? And, like, I... Right. I, I I was like, man, is, is it like an official partnership? And he was saying, dude, I think Lamont just did that to be like nice and, and try to give me some love. Can can you tell yeah. me about that? Because I feel like that's a really big deal for someone who is as visible as you are to say, hey, I I want to I want to pass it forward or, or play it, push it forward for somebody that's been helping me out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like it's no secret um, that everything that's Matt done for me has really helped my career. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be probably I probably wouldn't be on the phone with you talking right now. If I um if it wasn't for Matt, so um I have no shame in putting um putting him out there like that, and I hope that it brings him you know the well deserved publicity that he deserves um because he deserves all the credit and um and I feel like it has wow. been doing pretty good. I mean he's been um guys have always asked me you know wh- where what well like what's my philosophy and what everything and I always say it's not mine it's it's Matt so wow. and then I try and I I got him to. Um, direct them to him, and they go from there. But you know, I, I have no shame in in, uh, in saying that, and um, that's no that's also no shade on Coach uh, Ecker uh, and uh, JV with the Giants right now, uh, Justin Beal, because they those guys have helped me tremendously a lot too throughout the season, and those guys are great. I mean, obviously, Coach uh, Donnie Ecker, you know, has gone to the Rangers now. I mean, it's just a testament to all the hard work and the good work that he does, and it shows you the type of coach that he is. So. But no, I definitely never shade away from um, giving the credit where where it's due to the guys who've helped me along the way, and um, I'm definitely appreciative of them and, and grateful for them. Well, I'm only a little bit worried as somebody who you know really roots for Maryland that this might mean that he gets swooped uh, you know swooped up by someone else and ends up as like a big league hitting coach here soon. But he deserves right. it. Yeah, I get it. He deserves oh, yeah. it. There's no doubt. Uh, just another couple Absolutely. minutes here with Lamont Wade uh, from the San Francisco yeah. Giants. Lamont, did you ever like? Did you ever doubt yourself? Did you ever, you know, as you were going through struggles and and look, you know, I, I think we all know a baseball age catches up on you quickly, right? Like you're right. you're not right. 23 anymore. Um, no. Did you ever doubt yourself? Did you ever wonder like, 
if it just wasn't going to stick for you uh, in the big leagues, did you ever go through any of those types of feelings? Um, I said you always. I feel like the season is definitely always a roller coaster um, with your emotions. Um, I do my best to try and keep them in check, but you, you're right. I mean, doubt. I mean, failure always got, and doubt always kind of try and creep into your mind. But uh, I feel like I did a pretty good job of uh, shedding that away, and you know, I mean, really looking at myself at the end of the season. Like I said, sitting down talking to Matt about what I really want and what I think I can do. And I, I was always, I always had belief in myself. And I um, knew it was in there. I just really needed the guidance. Um, and Matt was, you know, is that is still that that guidance for me. And um, I was just so grateful that I, um, that he's been helping me, and uh, I've been able to, you know, put it put it to actual work. So, um, but no, I would definitely say n- never really didn't doubt that I couldn't do it. I just really needed to sit down and real and really, you know, put my mind to it and. Uh, you know, just really kind of come to realization that something needed to change. You were around a lot of in- incredible people out there in San Francisco, but Buster Posey stands out to me, and I right. saw you tweet about him when he retired. Um, what, right. what what did that time around – I mean, this is a Hall of Famer. This is an, an icon Absolutely. in the game of baseball. Um, what was that time like for you being around him? What did you learn? What did you pick up in that short time that you were able to spend around Buster Posey? Like you said, I mean, like you said, like you started off, it's, that was such a great locker room, and it was just full of, you know, veteran guys, veteran leadership guys who have done it for a while and have succeeded at the highest levels. Um, you got World World Series champions in there, MVPs in there. But like you said, I mean, the one who stands out is Buster, who, like you said, first round, first ballot Hall of Famer in my eyes, no doubt. No doubt. And, um, and um, he just, and, I mean, even the, just from the baseball side, I mean, just the, just the human side, you know, of Buster is what I really appreciated, you know, going in there every single day in the locker room, being able to hang around him and just really, you know, watch what he do, watch what he does, like the way he carries himself, his routine, uh, the way he interacts with the fans, uh, the way he talks to people, you know, just everything he does is, is first class and, you know, just the, with the utmost respect. And, uh, you know, we're going to miss Buster, but, you know, Buster will always be around and obviously will always be welcome in the locker room. And I'm sure – He'll be around at some point um, and definitely look forward to seeing him again. And um, But, no, he definitely meant a lot to me in that clubhouse. And um, what a career. I mean, he, no, I, mean I can't wait to see him go into the Hall of Fame. Um, I think it would be really good for him. All that dude ever did was win, man. Like, it's yeah, just amazing absolutely. how like when he was around, winning came with him. It, it was wild yeah. to see that. Um, yeah. Lamont, can you correct me if I'm wrong? Did, did you, you got to come back and play in Baltimore when you were in Minnesota at one point. Am I right about that? It's... Um, at, against the Orioles? No, I, no. I never played. Um, oh, in Bo- no, I never played against the Orioles professionally. Um, Man, I, the closest I played is um, against the Nationals. Okay, we yeah, sure, sure, and I'm sure you yeah. had a ton of family and friends that came down for that, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, plenty of family and friends came to DC. Um, that, uh, um, and any time we get over here, really, I mean, they make the drive up to Pittsburgh. Um, they came to New York, you know. So any time we get over here. They um they can they try and make it out, but um no I haven't played um in Camden Yards yet as a professional. Unfortunately, if I remember correctly, it is it's not this year. I don't think I got to do I got to do my math on this. I don't think that there's a trip to Baltimore. But have you thought about it all? Like at some point, right. what that would mean to you to to get the chance to play in your hometown? Oh, I mean that would mean the world. Um, the last the last time, the first and only time that I played in Camden Yards was um, for the Brooks Robinson game right, um, right. In, high, in high school. Great experience. Um, you know, I had a lot of fun, ton of fun. Um, the competition was unbelievable. Um, and I had tons of family and friends out for that. So I can only imagine um, those guys coming out to a professional game against the, you know, the Baltimore Orioles. I mean, that would be a lot of fun. Um, it would mean a lot to me to be able to do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, someday it'll happen. But yep. um, yeah, I definitely look forward to it. And that'll definitely be a game and, or a series that will be circled in my book for sure, and um, definitely for my family as well. Lamont, what can I plug for you, man? What what all can I get a a shout out for? I know you were working. You you had like a brand that you were working on, correct? Oh yeah, yeah, Lamont Way Shop. Um, you know, uh, but the, my my brother is actually running it um, with a family friend, Austin Suter. Um, my brother and them, them are running it. Uh, they're starting off the the clothing line. Um, it's going to be up probably right before spring training. So whenever we start, um, whenever we know when we're going to go back, they're going to probably start rolling out the 
the closing line. So definitely looking forward to that coming out. Soon. That's awesome, man. Uh, anything that topped uh, hitting the, the ball in the McCovey Cove when your mom was out there and it went right over her head, like anything that could possibly top that in your career? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, obviously, probably winning a World Series, maybe. Okay, yeah, so sure. Bad. All right. I mean, I get that, but, right? You know, but 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 other than that, I mean, I don't I don't think so. I mean, she still talks about that every time I come over to the house. Um, you know, she that moment it was so special to me. I I didn't even know she was up there. Oh. She's just, she, she's just always walking around when she gets there to the stadiums and stuff like that. She can't sit in her seat. She can't sit still. So she's just walking <laughs> around, and she just so happens to see. She hears my name and she sees that I'm up to bat, so she just figured that she would stand there and watch from there. And the next thing you know, I mean, I, I, to, to hit it over her head and for her to watch it and for the cameras to be right there to catch it, I mean, I mean, you can't make it up. And it was just special to me. And I actually got the ball back. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, that's so cool. And did you give it to her? I did. She was actually still there, so um, oh. they were in town. She was still in town when I got. It. I got it the next day, actually, and um, um, I met up with the guy who and retrieved the ball out the bay, and he gave it to me, and I, I signed a bat and gave him a bat and a couple other things, and, and then we took a picture, and, you know, I was very grateful for that day, and my mom actually came back home with the ball. So, oh, that's uh, so yeah, cool, she, uh, dude. Every time I come to the house, she has it, shows it to me. So, right. No, it's, it's definitely a special moment. I don't think anything would top that. Oh, sure. that just gave me goosebumps, man. <laughs> that is just so cool. Lamont Way, we yeah. are so happy for your success, dude. Seriously. Like, you know, we, we wish it could be back here. Like, you know, it's selfish, right? Like, we wish that's the way it was. But um, what you're doing and the way that, that, that you're showing out for Maryland and, and, a, and a program that's clearly on the rise, it's awesome to see. Uh, congratulations on an amazing year. Hopefully it won't be too long before we're seeing you back out on a baseball field again. Thank you so much for taking the time for us this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.